Eh, el próximo disertante va a ser eh, Oren Simanian. Eh, Oren es el director de Startau, eh, que es el centro de emprendimientos de la Universidad de Tel Aviv. Eh, y además eh, tiene una actividad secundaria eh, por la cual recibe muchos insultos, que ella seguramente les va a contar acerca de ellos. Oren. He said good things about me. So, first of all, thank you for the invitation. Uh, it's great to be here. Actually, people ask me, you came to Punta? I said, no, I came to the conference. But actually, now, after I say Punta, I came to Punta and then to the conference. I'll talk today about Israel a little bit, innovation, my experience in other places, my partner to pass the slide. Yermo, we are ready? Go on. So actually, I ask myself, why Punta del Este? Can you help me? Andres, Luis, why Punta del Este? Raise your hands, you can help me. Why Punta del Este, why? Why we are here today? You are supposed to answer me. I say, why? I have a question mark, you answer. Okay, bueno. Super, that's true. I came to Punta and Roland, where is Roland? He took me to dive with some animals. I felt scary and then he, they took me out to the city. This is one of the most important things. Entrepreneurship, most of the chances that we will fail. So at least let's have fun on the, let's have fun on the way. That's true. So they ask me what entrepreneurs need. They, they need to be, it's okay, you can run with it. No, actually, kidding. So entrepreneurs need to be, to be flexible and to actually understand that most of the chances, they will fail. So at least, you guys, you need to work together to have fun and to enjoy the way. We can jump ahead. This is a slide that I really like. The population in the world. And I asked this on other event that I was here when I arrived to Punta. What's gonna happen in 2050, some of you they were, were there, one answer. But the population in the world today is almost 8 billion. And the population 2050 is going to be? Yermo? 10 billion. And the biggest challenge is not food, is not water, and so on. The biggest challenge is what we do. Yermo, when I look at you, you jump on. This is the world today. Yermo, go with me. More, more, more. And people think that this is the main challenge. How those, those guys become friends. And it's not the main challenge. They're not, in any case, they're not to become friends. That's true. This is the main challenge. Okay, the main challenge is what we do with the young generation. 10, 15 years ago, we were talking about the brain drain from Israel. The young generation that is leaving Israel to other countries, okay? Why? There are three main engines that are running the ecosystem. is to see the role models, people that are doing well, and to say, I want to be like them. Is the unemployment. And the third one, someone wants to help me? is the competition between the big, big giants that are looking the early, for the early stage. They are looking for the young generation. They are looking for the good themes that are sitting here today or sitting in other places. Those guys, okay, they can answer this challenge, but we need to supply them with the ecosystem. And when I say ecosystem, I will ask a question. How many entrepreneurs are here today? Bueno, how many investors are here today? Don't be shy. Where are you guys? Where are the guys with the money? Put an X on each one of them. Where is the government? Raise your hands. You have money today. Okay. And what about the academia? How many universities or professors we have here today? Where is the professor I met today? Where is she? Where is she? 
Okay. What's missing today? We have those three. That those three are the main ingredients of the ecosystem. And you saw in your eyes, okay, what's missing today? Yermo, vamos. So how actually do we solve this situation? Okay? So I'll tell you a short story. Tel Aviv University, the president called me. He says, listen, we have delegation from Colombia. Come meet the guys. I said, okay. I meet the guys. I give a lecture. And then I ask, who is from the, you know, you know, the academia, private sector, and so on. And there was a guy from Huayra, Colombia. There was a guy from the university, Colombia, Bogota. And there was the guy that represents one of the big companies. I asked them to stand. Do you, not, do you guys know each other? They say no. You can't run an ecosystem if you don't talk one to each other. Those three main ingredients. Now, in some areas, they don't exist as they are supposed to if they want to become a leading ecosystem. And when I say a leading ecosystem, Today, there are many ecosystems. We are sitting here in Punta del Este. Uh, del este. I just told the one from the TV, this is amazing. See how many people, OK? And all the people, you didn't come to hear me. You came to network, OK? You came to know other people. But in many other locations around the world, people are sitting and doing the same, OK? So of course, we need those three, but on top of them, we have to build our own unique selling proposition. What's unique here? Luis, what's unique in Chile? So Luis is going to launch, can I tell? Luis is going to, <laughs> okay, tell it. This is a promotion for Luis. But Luis is going to launch a program that is based on the USPs in Chile, okay? Luis, raise your hand. Hey, okay? So on top of that, we need to understand. We build ecosystem somewhere, okay? What's unique there? So people ask me, okay, so what's unique in Israel? What's unique in Israel that we have desert, okay? We have our friends on the right and the sea on the other side, okay? And the third thing that we have, or we don't have, is water. We don't have water. So as a good friend of Pavlo said once, necessity is mother of all invention, okay? So what you actually have in Israel is that you don't have. Entrepreneurs are coming and they're saying, yes, we have a good team and we are doing amazing and the app is going well. We just need the money. Going back, the engines of entrepreneurship, they are looking for the young generation everywhere. Okay, Waira, it's not because they want to have Waira. Waira is here today. Okay, it's not because they want to have Waira or Microsoft Innovation Center. Sorry for doing promotion, I'm just giving examples. They are there because they understand since 2008, okay, the young generation is leading the next steps. And if the investors here won't understand that they need to dig at the earliest stage, okay, starting from the universities, working not only with the research institutes, and I'll talk about it, but with the talent there. So, I always use this one. This is the necessity. This is Israel 70 years ago. Yermo, this is Israel today. And I put the logo of Tel Aviv University, and this is promotion, and jumping ahead. Triple helix, take a look, Google it. Triple helix, it's a known model. This model fits also entrepreneurship. I created the model it's not mine, it's Andrew Yatskovic's one, but I created the same thing based on entrepreneurship. And then I met in Kazakhstan Andrew Yatskovic in a conference, and I told him, you know, that I'm using your model without knowing that I'm using it for entrepreneurship. You have to have the government support, which is here today announced. You have to have strong private sector that will adapt the innovation. And you have to have strong universities that will create ch two channels. One is the research, and one is the talent. Take care of this talent. The wish is to create a platform that will allow the young generation not only think how I will be able to work for the big corporates or how I will be able to work for the government, but how I will gain this toolbox to start my own initiative. Yermo, mistake. So, four main activities at the university. Tech transfer office. 
Tech Transfer Office, Tel Aviv University is producing approximately 600 patterns families, which is a lot. We still have a long way to go from the research to commercialization, not only at Tel Aviv University, worldwide. But this is a must. And Ramot, Yisum, T3 are the tech transfer offices at Tel Aviv University and other universities in Israel. And hands on innovation. Hands on innovation is, means that you take the talent and you connect this talent to the industry. You teach them from stretch, from day one, that they need to be connected. You, you, throw, you take them and you throw them into the water. Education. In the last three, four years, there is a hub of MBAs that are dealing with entrepreneurship, which is good. Still, there is a long way there between the regular MBA and what needs to be done, but this is a progress. And internationalization. So people ask, what's unique in Israel? So we say, okay, good universities, okay, private sector, support from the government, but Israel is a multinational, multi, multinational country in sense of multilingual and multicultural. I always say that my regions is that my father arrived from Iran, my mother from Libya, and people looking at me, what? Yes, and this is Israel, it's a mix, this is an experiment. And as I say always, in my case, this experiment did it do, didn't go well. But actually, actually, this what creates the motivation to think and to adopt other things, thoughts, other people thoughts and say, no, it's not going to work. Yermo. When I say education, universities, so the population in the world is almost 8 billion. The population in Israel is 8 million, and Tel Aviv University is ranked at the top 10 worldwide that their graduates are able to raise money and establish successful startup, raise money from VCs. It's a list that includes Stanford and so all the big names in the world. And how do you achieve that? It's not that today the government launch a program and tomorrow we all succeed. It takes time, and people are gonna fail. Personally, I'm working with the Arab community in Israel. I manage the accelerator in the north, in Nazareth. So it's an accelerator that deals with transportation and tourism. There is a lot of tourism in Nazareth. And I meet Fadi, the manager of the accelerator. And he says, yes, Soren, but what's next? We gave the money, they did well, we had great teams. No next, maybe they will all fail. You don't have to have next. It's not about creating the product. It's about creating the people everywhere. It's about education. The results won't come tomorrow. It takes years. And I'm not talking about web and mobile. We're talking about deep companies. And of course, that the easiest way is to penetrate to those channels of instant. But it takes years, and you need to be flexible and patient and lead this young generation with confidence. And when once they fail, you have to support them. And you have to support the one that on top to support the managers of those small micro VCs that invest and to understand this is a process. Going ahead. So the private sector, there is a chain in Israel. So the government is involved. There is the incubator model that I won't talk about, but supportive, supports the, the entrepreneurs and there, may, there are many other supportive programs. But you invest, you invest in them. They are doing well, some of them. Many of them are failing. Then they are becoming mentors. They educate the next one. The issue is that you have to create this chain and by name call it. Like what I did at Tel Aviv University is that I didn't create all the startups that went out of Tel Aviv University. But I put a name, I put a roof and I said, now it's going to be branded, OK? And the brand is very important. Punto Tech is very important because there is a brand. Otherwise, no one is going to be here today. People are developing. People are doing research everywhere. But just give them the platform and brand it. The private sector is very involved in Israel. It's involved out of the reason, Yermo, out of the reason that those two guys that established a startup company, which is named Gift Project, 
which was acquired by uh, eBay. And this is the second startup that eBay bought in Israel. The first one was Shopping.com. They understood, okay, those two guys with their una pagina, with their risk taking, they got the risk, they got, their, they got the motivation to establish a company, and they did well. So we understand that there is a talent there. We understand that it's worth being there. So we are going to open an R&D center in Israel. Yes, there are chances that they are going to leave Israel after they acquire the company. But we insist, as people that are leading the ecosystem, that companies that want and acquire, acquire companies in Israel, startups and so on, they have to think what's the future, where we are leading our ecosystem. So out of those, those two startups, we have R&D Center. Not only eBay, but many others, Apple, Facebook, and so on. Out of this methodology of meeting this talent, so people need to know that the talent exists in other places. Next. And of course, we said academia, private sector, and government. There are several programs, and Oren is here today, Oren, which is, was a manager and CEO of an incubator in Israel, and is involved with those kind of things. There are several programs that the Israeli government offers to the entrepreneurial ecosystem. But the most important thing to understand is Israel is one of the highest spenders on R&D as part of the GDP. We understand that there isn't any other option. If you remember the picture of the old guys that came to Israel, they didn't have any other option. So we understand that no natural resources, now they find some gas in, in, in the sea or something like that, so we are worried. But no other option but creating, no other option, jumping. This is a case study by Tel Aviv University. You are all using the flash memory sticks. So there is a professor called Simon Litzin. Remember this name. Simon Litzin and Dov Moran. How much time do I have? He said five, you said zero, so it's 10 or 50. <laughs> Simon Litzin and Dov Moran, they've met. Dov Moran is the entrepreneur. Simon Litzin, the researcher, Tel Aviv University. They developed together the product at M System that was acquired. The company was acquired by SanDisk in 2006 for $1.6 billion. That's a nice story. Later on, Dov Moran, the entrepreneur, tried to establish other companies. Sometimes he failed, some of them he did well. And Simon Litzin, the guy, came with an idea a year ago, which is a good friend of mine. He came with a nice idea. He was sitting in the office, reading an article, and said something about charging phones and so on. And he said, how come I wait so much time to charge my phone? And they established, I assume some of you have heard about it, the nano battery. The company is called Stordot, which you are able to charge your phone in 30 seconds. That's disruptive. That's innovation. And it's based on deep technology and a lot of experience. And I'm telling this story, Yermo, jump over one more. I'm telling this story, one more, Yermo, because of this slide. Of course, that if it ain't broke, don't fix it, okay? You don't have to create disruptive technologies. Innovation is not only about creating the technology, it's about integration, taking A, B, and C, and making them work together, okay? Not all of us are sitting in the labs and developing Stordot or M systems, but we can integrate. We can take amazing technology that comes out of the university and other places, based here or based there, doesn't really matter supported by the government or other channels, integrate them and move ahead. Integration is innovation, not only disruptive technologies. Next. The only thing we need to do is make it better, faster, and cheaper. And this is the challenge. Yermo. 2014, the world has a hype of innovation about buzzwords and so on. You go on the street, you see Coca-Cola, they have the most innovative Coke. What's innovative Coke? It's the same formula for 50 years. 
Okay, but it's innovative because those are buzzwords. So there is a lot of people that are researching government and so on. It's going to be next. Two thousand. Go back here. Two thousand fifteen. People wants to see results. People want to see the USPs, the KPIs, and so on. If we are leading next in two thousand and fifteen, as far as what I see is anti-aging and smart machines. Of course, IoT has been best and commercialized by crowdfunding and computing everywhere. It's Finally, my delivery to you. You can go back, I won't get deep into the details of crowdfunding, but my wish to you and to other here. In Israel, we create things out of scratch many times. We are not the best managers in the world. We learn by sharing. This is why we call knowledge to knowledge. But there is an open hub of innovation and knowledge that you can all learn and share with us, and we can do the same. What actually I push you to do, what you need to do here, and that's why the reason you came over here, is to meet the right people to create those teams that will integrate and create innovation. Don't go like stored out from scratch. It takes a lot of time. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed it.